In this video, we need to first confirm that the user has the correct Google Play Services version installed in their phone, and then we're going to set up the map and kind of the main layouts that we're going to be working with in this application. So what I mean by the correct version is every cell phone has Google Play Services installed, every Android device has Google Play Services installed into it, and in order to use the Google Maps API, they have to have a certain version. So the first thing we need to do in main activity when the app starts is actually check that they have that correct version because if they don't, then it just won't work. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So we'll start by creating, actually we'll start by getting a log. And then we're going to create a constant, a global static constant. So private static final integer error dialog request. And this is going to be the error that they'll get, or the error that we're going to handle if they actually don't have the correct version. And so now we go down here and we're going to create a method for checking the version. So we go private, actually we can make it public. Public boolean is services okay, is what we'll call it. And just go log D, checking Google services version and we can go int available equals google api availability dot get instance dot is google play services available and we just want to pass the context so main activity dot this and i'm going to close this project pane so we have a little more space here and then we want to say if available equals connection result dot success then we know that everything is okay. So everything is fine and the user can make map requests. So in that case, we just go log D, Google Play Services is working. And then if, so in that case, we can return true. And then if it's not true, so else, So else if Google API availability dot get instance and then dot is user resolvable error. And then we want to say available. So basically if the error is resolvable, so an error occurred, but we can resolve it. So that this would be like a versioning issue. If they had the wrong version, that means there's an issue, but we can fix it. So then it would just point them to where they can where they can go to resolve the error. So an error occurred, but we can fix it. So dialog dialog equals Google API availability dot get instance dot get error dialog. And this is where we can get a dialog right from Google for this particular error. So error dialog request. And then we just do dialog dot show. So we'll take the error that was thrown and Google will give us a dialog where we can find the solution to that problem. So then else we can't make map requests or you can't make map requests, I guess. You can't make map requests, yeah. So it's either if, so this case is everything is okay, we're ready to make map requests. This case is there's an error, but we can resolve it. In this case is there's nothing we can do you can't do anything basically um, yeah nothing you can do so if we get through all that then we'll just return true oh what am I doing gotta return false get through all that then there's a problem and we have to return false okay so now I want to create another method so private void init and inside init I'm just going to we're just gonna have one button for main activity and we're gonna be able to click it and it's gonna navigate us to the map so I don't have the button in the layout yet, but we will add that momentarily. So if service is okay, then we're gonna be running init, and inside init is where we're gonna have our button. So right now, like we have nothing in activity main, so let's go into activity main and actually add a button here. So I'm gonna get rid of this text view, just add a button, do wrap content, wrap content. So I'm just gonna label it map, uh, give it an ID of button map, and all this is gonna do is literally take us to our map activity where our map is gonna be. I can close this Gradle stuff, close the string stuff, 
And so let's go back into main activity and create that button. So actually, I don't even need to create it up here. I can just put it in here. So button, button map equals button find view by ID art ID dot button map and button map set on click listener new on click listener be intent intent equals new intent and we want to come from main activity dot this to what we're going to call map activity activity dot class and I don't have that class made yet so obviously we won't be able to navigate to that and that's so that's all that's going to do so it'll check the services if it's okay our button will get initialized and we'll have the ability to navigate to our map so let's create that new map activity so create a new java class map activity and extend app compact activity control o to insert on create and set uh, set content view r dot layout dot activity map is what we're going to call it but I haven't made that yet and let's just get our log up here okay so now let's create that new layout file so go resources and right click on layout go to new layout resource and activity map is what we're going to call this and this is where we're going to put all of our our map stuff and what we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a sec here so to start off, we're just gonna have kind of just a plain map to take up the entire view of the screen. I know in, if you watch the demo video, I have you know uh, a search bar and a bunch of image view widgets, a bunch of different stuff. But to start off, we're just gonna add that plain uh, sort of map in there. So let's go to the documentation, back to the getting started guide. And if we scroll down past after you get the API key and all that stuff, uh, right here it actually shows you what you need to do. So the XML layout file, this kind of section right here, this is what we need to add. We need to add this this fragment for a com Google Android GMS Maps support map, map fragment. We're gonna we're gonna copy this little code snippet right here and go back to Android Studio and then just paste that in. And so as you can see, it kind of takes up the whole screen. And this is what is what our map is going to be. This is the fragment that's gonna hold our map. And so we can actually we still have time in this video, so we can start setting up setting up our map. But before we can even think about actually creating a map object or anything like that, we still need to make sure we have all of the required permissions. So let's go into uh, our manifest file, and we actually need to add a second activity here too. So activity, and make sure to add that, that map activity. And we need to add a bunch of permissions. Uh, number one is going to be internet. We need to be able to use the internet to use maps. And actually what I'll do is I'll read them from the documentation. That way we know exactly which ones they are. So let's go back to the documentation. We're going to click on configuration over here and open it up in a new tab. And if we scroll down, it should tell us everything we need for the dependency. So uh, edit your applications manifest. Uh, this is the first one we need to add. So we need to add this metadata tag. And so let's go back to our project. And I think they said it needed to be uh, inside the application yeah so inside the application element so we just need to put it uh, right here is fine in metadata just like that now I'll go back to the documentation see what's next uh, specify your API key specify the permissions adding that uses permissions so location permissions so we need to add all location permissions described in the guide location data so we can click on this right here let's see here so we need access course location access find location so let's add those to the manifest so we'll just copy this guy here and go access find location and the next one is uses permission access course location so that's this one right here and then go back to the documentation and that should be all good for these you actually yeah now it's just telling us how to set it up so we can close this section back to the configuration uh, it's telling us that we don't need write external storage anymore we used to need that so versions 8.3 or later which we're, we're later than that we don't need that and we need to do access network state so let's add that permission so uses permission access network state and the next one is this I think you used to need 
you don't need to add explicitly to the manifest. Okay, so I think that should be good. Just scrolling up here. Oh, we need to add our API key. So uh, getting an API, so right here it says, you need to add the API key, key to the manifest. So this, this little code snippet right here, which is gonna go just, it can go either above or below that other metadata tag. And we're gonna get our API key, which we put in our strings file. So I can just copy that over to the manifest and paste that in. And that should be all the permissions we need. But if there's any errors, we'll obviously be back. So it's easy to see that all I did was follow the documentation. I, I wanted to make sure I emphasize that, that all, all I'm doing here to set this up is following the documentation. So if you ever wanted to set it up again, this is all you would need to do really. You just head to the getting started guide and follow the instructions and you should be good to go. So now we're, we're done all the housekeeping stuff. We have the permissions, we have the API key. We have a map fragment set up here. We're, we've checked the Google Play Services version. And so now in the next one, we should be ready to actually start setting up our map and getting our device's location. So I'll see you guys in that next video.